Hello YouTube friends, welcome to the Red Parrot channel. I'm your host Mary Ellen. This is an episode of Textile Thursday where I talk about textiles in some detail and hopefully provide some information, some entertainment, and maybe some ideas about how you might incorporate some of what I am talking about in your own junk journals. So uh, I suggested earlier this week maybe, um, at some point anyways, that I was going to tell you why I came to be down the very deep rabbit hole of chindi rugs and disassembling them. So we need to start on Instagram with this account, the teacher's table crafts and her hashtag three to five scrap challenge that is taking place over 2023. The idea is to make three to five items using three to five scrap pieces of fabric, three to five trims, three to five different threads, three to five different stitches, and make a three inch by five inch scrap that you can then use as part of your um, material that you could use for junk journals. So that would be, you can come up, cut them up for tabs, you can use them as standalones, you can uh, paper the back and so on and so forth. So I was very interested in this because I do love textiles and I love stitching as well as all of the paper crafts. And this felt very mm, low intensity. Three to five items per month seems to be quite doable. And I love the idea of being able to get some additional textiles included in some of the journals that I'm doing. So here's two items that I did for January. And they are very scrappy. They're intended to be that way. And she also says that, you know, loosely follow these rules, but there's really no rules because nobody's going to come and check your work. Um, and so I used the opportunity to have a three to five items of some kind of fiber, textile, thread, embroidery interest. And this was the... I have a third one that I've used in one of the journals where I am using a very specific technique that allows some crazy stitching to sandwich two pieces of cloth together and create this sort of wild, wacky embellishment. I've also done some stitching and I've put some embellishments on and that is what January was all about. Then I started thinking about uh, what I wanted to do for February. And I was weirdly, not weirdly, I was interested in quilting. I follow somebody on um, YouTube, The Catbird Quilts, who has a very lovely channel about harvesting men's dress shirts that she's thrifted and then converting them into quilts. And that is specifically her game. She shows you how to um, uh, un, uh, deconstruct them. That's the word I was looking for. And then a lot of quilting information. And that appealed to me. And then I started um, looking at quilting on YouTube. And there is the sort of standard North American type quilt where you are given a pattern and then you do squares and then you attach those squares and there may be triangles and there may be some other stuff. And it's very, very formal. You know what you're gonna get before you start for the large uh, majority. Uh, it's very geometrical, it's very regular. And then I came across, um, this person who is Margaret Fabrizio and she is on YouTube at A33. Margaret is 93 years old and she is a quilter, a visual artist. She is also a 25 year professor at Stanford and she is a harpsichordist by trade and she has done uh, 
tours all over the world and she up to and including playing for the Grateful Dead and um she is just a marvelous person if you have a chance to watch her being interviewed she's very thoughtful a tremendous artist and 93 years old and still going strong one of her paths led her to investigate something called a kawandi. I need to write this down so my accent won't be lost. Um, that is not a good piece of paper. Let's try this. I try and write down all the things and I sometimes forget some of the key ones. So she started investigating something called Kawandi quilt. A Kawandi quilt is done by the city, S I D D I, women of uh, India. And they are black women who were the progeny of former slaves. They were originally from Africa. And Kawandi is a quilting method, I guess, that they imported with them in times gone by from Africa. In any event, there is this small group of people doing these beautiful, very interesting quilts, and Margaret made it her life's goal to go visit them because she couldn't figure out how they were made. And so she has now a lifelong association with the women of um, the city women and um, a lifelong pursuit of creating Kawandi type quilts. Now what you may ask is a Kawandi quilt? Well, I have a very small Kawandi quilt. Kawandi is done, let's take a blank here so that you can understand it in a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna move some of this out of the way. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Move Margaret over there. And the word Kawandi is still there. So that's the quilt. So essentially what North American quilting does is they create some kind of a small squares and then they attach those squares together. In Kawandi quilting, what you do is you take a random patch of fabric. So let's pretend this is a you know this is a random piece of fabric, and you are going to put it along the edge, and then you get another random piece of fabric, and then you put that along the edge, overlapping, and then I'm just pretending here as I go, picking up pieces of paper, and then you go and you do another piece, and then. I'm running out of pieces of paper. Uh, use this, and then you are going to be able to put this paper down. And as you are doing this, all you are doing is sewing this down using a running stitch. So you are just going around the edge like this, and then you're going to be able to uh, I'll use another Card, pardon me, pardon my fat head, as always. We'll put this down here, and we we'll put that down there. And so you now have this going around like that. And this is a small piece of fabric, so when you get to the edge of this, then you're gonna put this down, and then you're gonna just keep going in sort of concentric stitches. And then you're going to maybe put in the last piece. Let's see if we can get a last piece here. Do a last piece. And then you would have a Kawandi quilt. I strongly encourage you to either Google or have a look at some of the um, material that Margaret has on her A tree three YouTube channel about Kawandi because this does it no justice whatsoever but that's essentially how they are built they are done with scraps of fabric and they are done in 
circles that sort of go to the middle, not, uh, they go around, not in circles, in sort of straight lines. And all they are doing is using a running stitch. So I wanted very badly to try. And so for February, I made a, a Kawandi miniature quilt. Scrap pieces of fabric. You can see how the lines are, you know, turning the corner here, then I turn the corner here, then I turn the corner here, and so on and so forth. These pieces at the end are small, small little triangles and are um, considered by the city women the finishing touch on any Kawandi quilt. So if I had just done that, they would consider that an unfinished quilt. And so there we are. <clears throat> so that is my quilt number one for February. Then I heard of another kind of quilt that is called I need another piece of paper. I should have written this all down. Cantha. Cantha also uses um, discarded series as part of the quilting methodology. So if you Google this and the making of a cantha quilt, you will see women who can make a quilt in about two hours. That is absolutely not a North American um, standard for making a quilt. And it's because the methodology and the materials are completely different. So while we are busy fussy cutting our, our squares and our, um, what do we call them? The triangles, we call them something. Right angle triangles. They're called, they're, they had abbreviation in the quilt world. You're screaming at me and you're saying, no, it's a this, it's this. We have all of those in nice little piles and so on and so forth. Cantha is not constructed that way. So Cantha, and I haven't made one yet, and so I have a scrap with some washi tape stuck to it. So this is a, a scrap of a sari, but consider the way some women make their living is they go from, you know, house to house uh, in villages and they call out for the scrap saris, the people that, you know, can I have your rags? And then they will take those rags home. And let's say this is a complete sari. And then they will put some kind of middle fabric in it. Let's make this a little smaller, smaller so that it works. And then what they do is and they take the other end of the sari and they go up like this. And then they do sort of the folding in of the one edge and they will do running stitches all the way up to here. Then they will turn this corner so that you have an even edge. There we are. And then they will go back and forth and back and forth, just using running stitches in a fairly um, uh, large stitch. And then they get to this edge and then they finish it. And then essentially they have a cantha quilt that is made from a discarded sari with some kind of uh, middle layer, maybe a sari that is, um, or a couple of saris depending on how thick they want it. So it is 100% a recycled, uh, textile recycled quilt same as the Kawandi. So this is Kantha, this is Kawandi, this is also using scraps of fabric to make a quilt textile. So you can absolutely see that there is a theme that is happening. We had the chindi quilt, or chindi rugs, that were made from the scrap pieces of sari. This is a type of scrap usage, and this is a type of scrap usage. Very different, and I 
am interested in exploring and understanding. I think if there was, if I had known when I was a teenager going to high school that there was a job called experimental archaeologist, I would totally have done that job. I'm very sad that I am not a myth buster. That's another job that I wish I had. Just because I don't have those job titles don't doesn't mean that I can't pursue it. And so this is you watching me pursue that. So the thing that I needed here to be authentic, let's say, is to get my hands on a Sari. And through the wonders of my friends and a little thrifting, I have, and I'm just going to hope that you have taken pictures of this, and I will put this off to the side. If I am smart enough, what I should do is remember to put this in the description. I am not that smart. So I try and put the cue cards out for you, as well as um, hopefully make that a little bit more accessible. But I digress. We are talking about series. So I was gifted two series, three series actually. Here's series number one. Uh, probably a cotton mix. This is Sari number two, and this is for sure cotton. This is the remnants of Sari number three. This is probably a polyester, and I made a Regency gown out of this Sari and used the beautiful broad edging as the edge of the dress. And so that turned out really nicely and I needed some kind of a bag. And so just for ease of moving material around in this video, I've just brought you the bag so you can see what the, the color of the, um, the Sari was. So at that time I thought, yeah, you know what? I need, I need some Sari. I need to understand that. I hadn't laundered these. So these were just very, very stiff with all of the sizing that is included. And it was just um, like paper folded, it was so stiff. And now that I've washed it, there's these, it's beautiful, beautiful fabric. And when you take the sizing out, you can start to understand the, um, the, the heat of the country. I mean, these are very, very light, light pieces of fabric. You can almost see my hand through it. Uh, they're light and they're soft and they're brilliantly colored and they're really pretty and functional. And the other thing that you can understand from these as a weaver is they basically have an entire kind of clothing that is made from nothing but a very large rectangle of fabric. And if you remember, do I still have my little... I might have my little image somewhere. I don't know. Maybe. It's probably here somewhere. If you remember my loom, the loom that I drew you. Nope, oh, draw, draw the loom again. We have Buddy here. He's at the loom. Here's the big loom. There's all your warp threads. And so. It is very efficient because all the weaver is doing is making a very large rectangle and there is no waste. It is ready to go. It is fairly um, simple, straightforward, economical, and fairly easy to create. All you're doing is just a straight weave and you get gorgeous textiles like this. And by straight weave, I am completely dismissing any of the gorgeous inclusions that are in a fabric like this of all of the, the special, you know, weaving that is happening to make this gorgeousness. I also have a, what I would call a special occasion seri which is this, and you should have heard a thump. This textile weighs about four pounds. It is very, very heavy. It is the opposite of this in terms of, you know, it's that's this light. 
that's this light. Um, where's the, where's the end? Is there an end? There's an end. Can I open it up? Show you some more of this? So the reason why this is so heavy is all of these uh, metallic fibers. I do not think they are actual gold, but they are metallic and that adds all of the weight to it. And there's, it just goes on for miles. Um, by miles, I mean probably about eight, um, nine yards of fabric. And so this is the other sari that I have. So to be able to, now circling back to what our point was, I wanted to do a test. I wanted to do something that was small and straightforward and doable within a month. I had these three, whoops, I had these three series. So 100%, I am not gonna cut into this seri for a small piece of fabric because it is a gorgeous thing on its own and I might make a costume out of it. I might pass it on to somebody who um, needs it more than I do. I might just be a keeper of it for a while. So no, not gonna cut into that. These two had roughly the same um, uh, story to them. This one has got a lot of beautiful, interesting weaving in it. And then you have to figure out, well, which part do I want to cut into? And I couldn't make a decision, so I dismissed that one. I'm not going to use that one. And then this one had kind of the same issue as well. Beautiful weaving. Um, you know, comes out in lovely colors. Am I going to cut off an end? Uh, I might have. I might have cut off an end. But then I saw the video where somebody last year, because last year was the time when everybody kind of lost their um, minds on cutting up chindi rugs. I thought, oh, I can get a little bit of seri that is already cut up and I don't have to cut into my good series. I can just do that. So that is literally how I came to be cutting up chindi rugs because I wanted a piece kind of about that big. This is all pulled up here. I'll need to iron this before I sew anything so that I can do a chindi rug as my second rug for, where did the card go? for three to five scrap challenge, February edition. That's how we made that whole path back to here. And now that I am here, um, some interesting things have happened. I have now understood quilting in a completely broadened sense. And that is I had in my head the idea of North American quilting being the way you do quilting. And it 100% is not the only way to do quilting. There are people and societies all over the world doing their version of how do I create a large blanket type um, piece of material using the resources that they have with the art traditions that they have to be able to make a textile. And uh, of course, it is a huge rabbit hole. I will finish this uh, cantha to go with my kawandi. And then I have since been looking at other quilt methods. I'm just gonna put her card here while I continue to talk for a bit. And there is a lot of interesting African style of quilting. And one of them is coin quilts. And so I think that might be my third quilt. And the coin quilt is doubly interesting to me because the next journal that I have to make is for someone that comes from Nigeria. And I would like to include um, maybe something small, maybe a fabric flip that has one of her um, what she might view as a familiar uh, textile representation. 
So that is all I can think of for now to talk about for a textile Thursday. And like, here's my little thing. Here's my little thing. This was an episode of Textile Thursday. Um, please like, subscribe, share if you're interested in finding um, more episodes like these and maybe other people who are also really interested in the very large nerd world of textile and threads and embroidery. Thanks so much and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.